Hello, I'm Keith Allen, host of For the People. I realize you enjoy the show and I appreciate you listening. Could you do me a favor? I need your help because this show is a labor of love. And without you making a donation today, I cannot make this show a reality in any more places. You see, my dream is to grow this program. And to do that, it takes money. And quite simply, I don't have it. But what I do have is a microphone and a radio network that uplinks my show and five great radio stations that air my show daily. Can I count on you today to make a one-time donation? Our summer station campaign can be a reality with your help. Thank you, and God bless America. From Studio 1A in Tampa, Florida, comes a talk show that really feels your pain and tells you like it is. We love America and all that freedom-loving Americans want to protect. Live from coast to coast and on your radio, it's For the People with Keith Allen. We'll help you survive this thing called life. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am Keith Allen and proudly welcoming you to this Friday's edition of For the People. It's April the 7th. It's 2017. And there's a lot of breaking news, a lot of things to talk about. Neil Gorsuch, by the way, just sworn in. And uh, man, it's been a huge battle to uh, to get that done. But um, I support Neil Gorsuch. I really feel like he's a fair judge and I don't think he's all these things that the the left has accused him to be. It's just I understand some of the things that they're saying about him being that uh, he's conservative. That's true. Um, That uh, he has views that uh, stem from conservatism. Um, Not a bad thing. Um, But uh, Scalia's legacy, I don't believe that he's going to be this far extremist, right-winged kook uh, that's going to just throw everything off center. It's nothing in his records that I have read, any of the cases that I have read. Um, everything right now is a speculatory, speculatory, you know, with the Dems just trying to smear him. And and it's it's retaliation. Dems have even said it was retaliation. Last night when I was relaxing, I knew this was coming. And I would like to say that Donald Trump um, did the right thing in Syria. There's people that are... You know, saying that uh, he acted hastily, he acted without Congress. Anybody um, that has a heart that saw those images coming in from Syria and says that we should have done nothing. Listen, we got nothing for the last six years with policy that failed. The United States policy, specifically under Barack Obama, did not work. And last night, It's a little payback, and there's more where that came from, and there were some updates on this, but this was Donald Trump last night, if you did not hear him announcing what was getting ready to go down. Syrian dictator Bashar al-Assad launched a horrible chemical weapons attack on innocent civilians. Using a deadly nerve agent, Assad choked out the lives of helpless men, women and children it was a slow and brutal death for so many even beautiful babies were cruelly murdered in this very barbaric attack no child of god should ever suffer such horror tonight i ordered a targeted military strike on the airfield in Syria from where the chemical attack was launched. It is in this vital national security interest of the United States to prevent and deter the spread and use of deadly chemical weapons. There can be no dispute that Syria used banned chemical weapons violated its obligations under the Chemical Weapons Convention and ignored the urging of the UN Security Council. 
years of previous attempts at changing Assad's behavior have all failed and failed very dramatically. As a result, the refugee crisis continues to deepen and the region continues to destabilize, threatening the United States and its allies. Tonight I call on all civilized nations to join us in seeking to end the slaughter and bloodshed in Syria, and also to end terrorism of all kinds and all types. We ask for God's wisdom as we face the challenge of our very troubled world. We pray for the lives of the wounded and for the souls of those who have passed. And we hope that as long as America stands for justice, then peace and harmony will, in the end, prevail. Good night, and God bless America and the entire world. Thank you. Amen. I'd like to say that we, we really did unleash some serious whoop-ass. That airfield looks like hell. Um, an interesting factoid this morning, or this afternoon, this evening, wherever you're listening, but uh, breaking news on that, and you may have heard that a Russian uh, warship is headed in the vicinity of where our warships are, from coming in from the Black Sea to the Mediterranean, and a lot of people are trying to speculate as to what that means, but uh, headed towards our warships, trying to show strength. What are they trying to do? Maybe there's a meeting. Maybe the admirals are going to meet. Nobody quite knows. It would be really quite stupid to do anything to our warships or to America. I think Putin knows that. The pundits have been talking about it. Rand Paul, of course, he objects on this whole thing, criticizing Donald Trump for the airstrike in Syria suggesting that he violated the Constitution by not seeking congressional approval beforehand. The president can do what he did. And the California Democrat, um, here's a representative, Ted Lieu, he agreed with Paul, but tweeted, Trump can use military force in defense of U.S., but attacking Assad regime requires con congressional approval. So maybe Rand Paul... You may want to take some marching orders from Ted Lieu that understands a little bit more what's going on. You may want to read about the powers and what the president can and can't do, what Ronald Reagan did and so many before him, Bill Clinton with Bosnia. Uh, the president can do a lot of things. And the president did act, and he acted swiftly and assuredly. And some people are saying it's not enough. It was a great message, and as a matter of fact, it was the airfield that the Syrian gas, uh, Syrian gas rather, was launched from this very airfield. And if you can see some of those satellite pictures that the Pentagon released, uh, it's pretty charred earth, and it's uh, it's pretty bad. And yes, the Russians were warned. I know the uh, left media, CNN, was just going crazy. A lot of leftist journalists last night were saying. Oh, this is going to be bad. The United States just added, acted so swiftly, and uh, just because Trump wanted to do this, that, oh, these Russians and the Syrians and the civilians and everybody's going to get killed, and uh, there was a hotline to the Kremlin, and the Russians did get out. Thank you very much. Uh, it's handled uh, in the way that it needs to be handled. No fear there. and. Uh, Trump is doing it right. He's going to get our allies together, and there will be a plan. And I will tell you, not going to be the policies that we've had for six years. Assad will go. He will get out. Russia's not going to bully us. Iran is not going to bully the United States of America. We're not going to sit idly anymore. We're not going to do it. Peace through strength. Peace, peace through strength. That's why we have the world's greatest military. That's why our men 
are trained the way they are. We don't want to go to war, but we train because war is necessary. Nobody wants a war in Syria. I don't want a war in Syria. But he cannot go on doing what he's doing in Russia, propping up Assad. Is this the message that Russia wants to continue saying that using gas, is that what Putin's going to do? Is that what he wants to do? And better yet, is that what we want here in the United States where it's acceptable? It's not acceptable. And Trump knew it and uh, he acted. And thank goodness that he did. And the international community reacting to the bombing. And, of course, a lot of praise from the Israeli president. Um, If you're just catching us, there was 59 Tomahawk missiles from the Navy warship in the Mediterranean Sea uh, on an air base near Homs at 3.45 a.m. local time. The last night when you're getting ready to go to bed, this all went down. And which is really uh, just bizarre. Well, first, uh, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, or Bibi, that's his uh, affectionate name, said in a statement that I'm uh, both word and action. Trump sent a strong and clear message that the use and spread of chemical weapons will not be tolerated. This was calculated and um, a targeted response. And the Australian Prime Minister, Malcolm Tumble, um, echoed the same sentiments as well. Japan's prime minister and around in the world and so forth and so on. Of course, who did not like it was the Russians and the Iranians. Egypt's president liked it, but no, the, 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 the Iranians didn't like the deal. Of course not, because they're kings of terror. And Russia is siding along with them. This sent a huge message to them and to other rogue nations that this is not going to be accepted. And there's another sheriff in town. His name is Donald Trump. He's not going to stand. We should not stand. And what do they say? What is the saying going? I guess I paraphrase it slightly. But uh, when evil triumphs, when good men do nothing. And America's done something through the years for our allies to go up to their rescue when Good men would do nothing. We did. I was talking about uh, earlier this week, the the greatest generation. Well, we have a generation today that uh, we're willing, more than willing to do the same and same thing right now. Like our brave men in, in uniform last night sent those tomahawks and uh, did the damage that it needed. Now it's not going to bring back any more lives that were taken. But it's a great deterrent to say, you do that again, or even think about doing that again. There's more where that came from, and there is much more. And uh, we can do a lot more. That was just uh, a little bruise on an air base. Of course, Bashar Assad, his office immediately waiting, called the U.S. airstrike ordered by President Donald Trump on Thursday. This is the big headline, New York Times, wake of. Suspected chemical attacks, a blatant act of aggression. And Russia says this is a a breach of international protocol. And what's so funny about that whole thing is, wait a second. What happened when he went into Crimea? What happened when he started killing people and rolling tanks and you just took it over? You uh, clearly violated in international law and the sovereignty of another country. What in the world uh, are you talking about? Seriously, this is the old KGB, Putin, coming out. And now it's challenging us in the Mediterranean, bringing his warship out there. This is just ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. And he's going to be cooking his goose even more if he keeps it up. Um, if Putin was smart, well, because he's got an air base, so that's the the main reason that he's interested in. It. He's got a uh, he's got a, a Russian air base over there. Um, economically, he's got a naval base over there. So you know they're just trying to, you know, oh no no, we're not going to let the Americans in any further. This is our 
This is our mission. This this is this is our regime. This is kind of like our country. The, the like-minded people over there. Now, when you gas your people, 